Finally, my Antminer L3 has come in, and I've already taken that out of the box. The only thing left in the box is this piece of paper, which is basically just instructions about how to set it up. So here is the Antminer L3 Plus. It mines at a hash rate of about 504 mega hash a second, and it consumes about 800 watts from the wall, plus or minus 10%. Uh, you're going to need a PSU with about 9 ATX connectors. Over here you can see there are 8 uh, PCI, PCIe connectors here. Um, and then there's another one for the, for the main power component. This Antminer L3 contains 4 hashing boards. Each is powered via 2 PCIe slots and the control board is powered by one PCIe slot. The power consumption varies, temperature and hash boards, okay. Power consumption of approximately a thousand watts. Well, the website says 800 and it says a thousand here, so that's probably the variation. Before powering this machine, you should do a visual inspection. Got it. And then it just tells you about how to see particular attention to the following before powering this device. Each hash board has two PCIe ports, okay. Um, inspect the cables when powering up the device. When setting up the device, please leave considerable space between the power supplies and the miner, got it. Um, yeah, and then you gotta con configure your I IP address, which we'll get into that as well. And then the rest of this is all about uh, RMA warranty stuff. So the power supply we'll be using is an APW3 TAC12 TAC1600 Bravo 2. As you can see, this PSU comes with plenty of ATX uh, PCIe connectors. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and skip through this part and connect all the connectors. The power supplies from Bitmain don't support 110, 115 volt power outlets. So long story short, you need a transformer that'll convert from 115 to 220 output. That's what this transformer here is for. It's a step up down transformer up to 3000 watts capability. So even if the miner would spike to a thousand watt requirement, uh, this transformer can still handle it. The transformers don't have any type of cooling built in, so I like to put a fan next to them uh, just to keep the heat off of them. All right, so I've got all my uh, PCIe connectors in. Uh, I've got the transformer set up. All that's left to do is connect the ethernet cable, which is right here. And lastly, I just turn on the transformer. All right, so you've just connected your miner and you haven't set anything up. You haven't told, told, told it how to mine. All you've done is connected it and you've connected the network cable. So the first step is to find your miner on the network. In order to do this, you're gonna need to log into your router and locate the new device. It's gonna give you an IP address. Uh, go ahead and navigate to that IP address. You're going to get a screen that looks like this. The username and password is root root R O O T. All right. So once you get into the miner, you've got to go to configuration. This is where you'll be setting up the pool that the miner is on, the worker name, and the password. Of course, you could use any pool you'd like. In this case, I'm just going to be using Ant Pool because I already mined Bitcoin with them. To start, simply go to the top left and change this to Litecoin. Before you can even add a new worker, you're going to have to create a sub account in the Litecoin pool. And in order to do this, you're going to have to go to settings first and uh, add a sub account. So once you've made a sub account, you'll then be able to create your worker. All right, so when you're in uh, your Antminer settings for configuration on the network, 
there will be a spot for URL uh, and it has settings for three different pools. If you're setting up with Antminer, these are the three servers that they want you to put in there in case one of the servers goes down or whatever. Uh, it'll automatically start mining on the next server, which are the 888-8443 and 25. And when you're filling out your miner configuration, you're going to see a screen like this. Uh, the, there's three fields for each pool. So the first field on the is the, going to be the, uh, the server, the URL, the first URL. Um, this is there's three different pools, so you're going to use three different URLs for each one. Then the second block for each pool is your worker name, which is going to be like the your username dot whatever you name you put your worker. Like if your username is fish, then dot, and your worker's name is taco, it's going to be fish dot taco. Um, and then for the password, just leave it blank for all of them. It comes default as one two three, and you can leave it as one two three. Uh, but there really is no password, just, you can just leave it blank. Alright, according to this Litecoin mining calculator right here, one of these L3s, let's just say it's hashing at about 500 mega hash a second, um, and the difficulty is already default, and the price of Litecoin right now is about $45 each. Uh, so, estimated Litecoin you could mine in a day is about uh, half of a Litecoin every day, so about 24 bucks a day, or 170 bucks a week. All right, hopefully this little review slash tutorial was useful. Um, if you did enjoy this uh, L3 review, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, subscribe, uh, because uh, you'll be sure to see more videos like this in the near future. Thanks.